Okay, releasing the energy. So in the early days of um, um, learning from Hawkins, the, the, the how to release feelings, heavy feelings, uh, especially around, uh, for myself, it was um, in the beginning, heavy illnesses, really, like kidney failure, asthma, gout, um, and of course, later on, uh, with letting go of addictions like food and other addictions, huge feelings of withdrawal and fear and um, and extreme emotionality. So how did I release all of those? Um, well, um, I was very much into listening to um, Dr. David R. Hawkins' teachings. He's got some Office series videos, which I highly recommend to spiritual seekers. Um, and uh, the, like the ones he's got on illness and uh, and handling major crises. Um, anyway, I recommend those to anyone. Uh, they're available on his website. Um, and uh, so it was the thing, of course, is like all these repressed energies that all my life I'd been using addiction and thinking um, as a form of, uh, you know, just thinking is a form of repressing and uh, resistance to what is. And also that any form of addiction or, or dualistic experience is also a form of a repression and builds up these um, repressed feelings. Let's call them repressed feelings. These sort of um, tubs, if you like, to visualize it, these tubs of repressed fear, repressed shame and guilt, repressed anger, um, and also these other sort of emotional qualities like feelings of suffocation or feelings of exhaustion or feelings of, um, you know, you don't have to label them. It doesn't really matter. I mean, the labels are actually not not the point of the practice, which is to stop labeling, stop putting the word fear, shame, guilt, or in the body or here, there, or whatever. Um, no story required, no label required, and just to allow what is to be experienced completely. So um, so that was the, the thing. And uh, in the early days, uh, using that practice, there were some other practices like cancellations of beliefs and doing the Course in Miracles, but I won't go into those uh, in this video. And of course, watching Hawkins' videos nonstop and books. Um, through that, you know, I imbibed, I got to meet, I was blessed to meet him a few times in America. Um, you know, it came, of course, yes, just um, don't be in the ego, don't label or make a story about anything and allow everything there is an experience to be welcomed without thought. And uh, the thing that I really learned from him, because he talked about going into um, operations without anesthetic and being on the razor's edge and allowing, you know, as the surgeon is cutting through the body, to allow the experience to be 100% experienced without any resistance or thought, you know, at the level of an enlightened master and how he'd, he'd transcend off into the light and the bliss. Uh, by uh, by, and I knew he was telling the truth. And I've also had some similar mystical experiences. So this this mis mystical thing of when the ego stops resisting and labeling experience, you know, the experience of the infinite light and the love that transcends this world. So uh, I knew that was true, uh, but also it was kind of obvious that I had a lifetime of addiction and repression and thinking which was very heavily ingrained and tying me to these very dense levels of consciousness. So there was this, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't like the story of having kidney failure, being on a dialysis machine, uh, finding that I couldn't breathe because I felt like I was asthmatic or having horrific pain in the feet with gout attacks, inflammatory gout attacks in the feet. So didn't like all of that, those labels and the story. So was very, very willing to do that, plus the Course in Miracles and Hawkins' teachings, to um, to transcend that. And um, so what's my experience? Well, my experience was um, now all of that stuff is gone. So uh, I have to sh share, I mean, I do have compassion for those who go through heavy, heavy feelings or heavy illnesses that can sometimes feel like it's going on for years. You know, my experience with that, just to share it with those who are suffering from heavy feelings, or it's like the thing that got, gave me great hope. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the labels, I think, from the levels of consciousness is like 
oh, this feeling will never end. So I might as well just have some donuts and put the TV on or start thinking. Um, you know, what's the point? Well, Hawkins um, revealed it to be like stacks. You know, if you don't think and you just be with those feelings without thought and you don't try and escape the feelings, but you allow them to come up with full intensity without trying to pick up the phone, trying to think or trying to eat a bag of donuts or whatever addiction it is, then you're releasing. This gave me great hope when I heard him. It's like you might have 100 units of guilt or of suffocation or of pins and needles or whatever it is. And maybe it's 100 hours or 500 hours. If you just allow it to be and experience it without resistance, it comes to an end. And these illnesses, these feelings, they eventually evaporate off, never to return. And and he, he he says it, they come up in waves and you just allow them without resisting, without thinking and using any addiction. And eventually, over the years or over the weeks, they come less and less often, less and less intense, and then they vanish, never to reappear. And he said his 23 illnesses left him in about three to five years. And I found my three illnesses left me in three to five years, just like he had reported with his. Um, so, uh, and I've shared in other videos, you know, I mean, in incredible miracles that have happened with them. One of them being, you know, just by cancelling beliefs in medication, the side effects, you know, I went down from 13 medication to one. And the doctors were very impressed with the, the miracles that were happening through letting go of beliefs and feeling out the repressed feelings. So, um, so talk about my practical experience of letting these emotions go and to talk about guilt. Well, yes, for me, you could say that fear, shame, and, and all of these things is the guilt. I'll talk about this in another video soon. Uh, the guilt of separation from divinity, from the infinite light. Uh, and then to experience the darkness of being in separation and duality. Uh, so I would say that the guilt, which the Course in Miracles is referring to, the guilt of separation, and to experience du duality, to experience separation from that infinite non-dual experiencing, the infinite light, I call it infinite light and love, um, that is beyond duality and separation and this and that, um, is, you know, uh, we talk about it, is, you know, the various aspects of the guilt or the fear, if you like, of shame, guilt and fear of being in separation and creating the separation from the non-dual field, the infinite non-dual field. So, um, so the experience is, um, okay, on a practical level, I mean, it, it's, it's like actually letting go of pain is a slightly different learning curve and experience of letting go of fear, of letting go of suffocation, of letting go of a gout attack. There's all, I, I would share my different stories. You know, if someone said, um, if someone said, look, I've got a huge wadge of fear or panic. Well, panic, you know, panic attacks. I had a lot of panic attacks, letting go of the addictions. Um, ex extreme emotionality coming up because I can't use those donuts or whatever it is that I wanted to use to escape the feelings. So the panic attacks is like, uh, how do you feel out of panic attack? Well, it's like you think if you don't use the thing, it is a feeling of, uh, uh, for my, my panic attacks are like, I can't breathe and I'm suffocating to death. And it's kind of like absolute terror. That was what panic attack was like, okay, well, how do you feel that out? Well, it's a thing of like, well, what's the message in a panic attack? Message attack, messages use, otherwise you'll die and it'll be unbearable torment. So then it was kind of obvious from Hawkins' teachings that I've got to be willing to face the worst thought and go through the emotions and be willing. So the worst thing is like the ego says, don't go through this or you will die. So it's then you go, well, it's, then I have to be willing to die. It's okay. I'll call the bluff of my ego. Uh, I'm willing to die and suffocate to death, but I will not turn back and use on anything. And it was kind of obvious that's what's required to go through. Otherwise, I will back out and eat a bag of donuts or return to something. So you just go, okay, the next time I have a panic attack, I'm, uh, and I said to myself, this is how I let go of my food addiction, I'm going to sit in this chair and if the panic attack goes on for however long it goes and then it kills me, that's fine. But either it kills me and that's fine, I'm willing to die, 
or um or I, you know I, I go through it and Hawkins says um and it was kind of obvious as well you know it was more likely just by using it, I'd die anyway so why not die on the panic attack where I have a chance of transcending it so I did that so that's how you you go go through it, how I went through a panic attack um how do you go through something like um uh now something a totally different feeling is is exhaustion to the point of near death because you've got kidney failure it is really near death you know no energy at all for months and years how do you feel that out so that's a slightly different one so my i'm just sharing my practical experience of letting different types of things go well you know every day i'd sit down and um now the um i also had a mystical i, I met a teacher of enlightenment I remember, and I, I went in, my brain was foggy, I had kidney failure, totally exhausted, and he was talking about being the observer. He was talking to a member of the audience of being the observer. Uh, he was talking to the audience like, you know, there's something witnessing your story, blah, blah, blah. And I was in the audience, and at the end of the lecture, or the end of the, the, the satsang, uh, my kidney failure symptoms had disappeared. There was like infinite presence energy, even though for it felt like for years I'd been like a sick person in this sort of belief of kidney failure and fog and low energy. There was loads of energy and it was recognized actually that I was just buying into an illusion of kidney failure and that the witnesser of the exhaustion and the belief in kidney failure and that it's a medical condition wasn't subject to kidney failure and exhaustion. So there was a recognition, there is actually an observer, if I can I'd be the observer of the whole illness, that is not tired, exhausted, and half dead. Even if the experience was like that and doctors were saying that's the truth and I believe that. So that shattered the belief that any medical illness, even if the doctors say you've got kidney failure, organ failure, you're about to die, you've got no energy, uh, your creatinine levels are sky high, you know, you're on the brink of death, your kidneys are at 15%, barely enough to keep you alive, not enough to keep you alive, you need to be on a machine. So all of that is very, very heavy stuff. But actually, if you go to the observer, all that, it doesn't exist there. There's infinite energy. So I saw that the whole belief system was, it's all about load of bullshit. You know, there is no such thing. Um, these beliefs in illness and death and stuff are actually just belief systems which tie me down. So it's very, very powerful. So I knew that by being the, if I, can I be the observer of these feelings of exhaustion? Or if I can't do that, can I just sit, trust Hawkins that, um, okay, maybe I have like 500 or 1000 hours of having to sit with exhaustion and not try and escape it or label it. So every day I'll just wake up and I just sit down in my chair straight up and just allow, not try and resist the exhaustion, but just be with it and try and feel it out, you know, not resist it and just say, well, you know, if I can do half an hour, an hour every day, you know, and to uh, either I drop dead of exhaustion or it passes. And just by doing that, the observer and feeling with it for actually years, I think it took about five years. So it's not like a quick fix to get to release the exhaustion of kidney failure. You know, suddenly, um, and towards the end, for those who, you know, to be real with people who suffer really bad illnesses, towards the end, it, it did become like suicidal. It felt like I was about to die and there was no energy left in the body. I wouldn't be able to go much longer. But here's the, the experience. It was like sometimes there's these tests, like you need to keep going on with your spiritual work, even if you feel you're going to die and it's going to kill you and still have faith. And it was very shortly after that black period that the, I was offered a kidney transplant. It was like God said, like you got you still got to go through the worst dark patches and have faith. And then the miracle happened, there was a kidney transplant, all that's gone now. So, you know, to have faith, I mean, my teacher is David Hawkins, he's the only teacher that I've met that I recommend. I don't endorse any others. Um, and, um, you know, um, have faith in either David Hawkins, or you can have faith in what I've told you in this video. Um, to keep going and sometimes you're tested by the illness and by illusions and the collective illusions of society and the illusions that you're programmed with by others or people who you should think you should trust that these illnesses can't go or these things ha you can't have miraculous re resolution to these things 
so uh, pain is another one very quickly. Um, pain is um, uh, pain. I've had quite a few. There was one I've shared it many times. I'll very quickly do to try and do it in a minute. So when you notice, like I remember, um, you know, I was a mad food addict and I'd had these bananas and doctors said, avoid bananas. And I'd eaten a bag of bananas and said, come into the hospital to A&E and have emergency treatment for a heart attack. And they had this huge needle that was about to go all the way up my arm to my heart, horrifically looking. And I thought, oh my God, that is the most fat, long needle I've ever seen in my life. And they were going to plunge it up my arm. And I thought, well, you just don't resist. I mean, if Hawkins can go through an operation without resisting, I cannot resist as that huge needle goes up my veins and in, towards my heart and just feel it 100% without resistance. And I remember they were plunging this huge needle into my arm towards my heart. And I said, I'm not going to resist. I'm not going to think. I'm going to allow the pain, even if it's horrific. I won't resist it. And I, I, I started to lose consciousness as I was going off into bliss. And then suddenly all these nurses and doctors started shaking me vigorously. They thought I was having a diabetic attack and giving me these uh, sugar milkshakes. But I was really like, you know, disappointed because I wanted to go off into the bliss. So it's absolutely like Hawkins said. So it's like if you're just about to be run over by a bus or, or an axe murderer is about to chop your head off, rather than resist or think, you, you welcome the pain 100% as it goes through you. And you can transcend, in my experience, to, to the light. Sorry if that was a bit too, um, this video is a bit too graphic. Um, yeah, I'll leave that there and stop the video.